Hey, how's it going? You're tuned into my channel, Changing the Game. I'm Jules Thomas, and today I'm talking about alcoholism and how I stayed sober for 21 years. I was born in Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada, to two parents that were alcoholics. I grew up around alcoholism my whole life. I started drinking when I was 11 years old. I quit when I was 15 years old. Some people ask, 15 years old? How, how, you know, how, where did you get started? How did you end up at that point where you're 15 years old and you have to quit drinking? Growing up, I was one of those kids running around at parties, watching everyone get drunk and wasted and everything like that. For me, growing up, being around alcoholics and alcohol was a regular thing, seemed like an everyday thing, a normal thing, seeing everybody drunk all the time. My mom left my dad when I was about four years old. She was in a relationship where they were both alcoholics, a poisonous relationship. And she grew up with an alcoholic father and she wanted, wanted something different for us. She wanted something better for us. But when my mom left my dad, it was just me and my brother and my mom. She had moved us away from our community, so it was just us and that was something we had to adjust to. Even though she left, she was still struggling with her addictions, and whenever we went back home, back to Valview, back to Sturgeon Lake, back to Grand Prairie area, it was the same thing all the time. It was the parties, it was the drinking, everything like that. Being a single mother, raising two kids by herself, you know, like in that situation, we didn't have a lot. We didn't have much, we didn't have a lot of money, we didn't have a vehicle, we we lived in small apartments and we moved around a lot. At an early age, since we were always around alcohol and we seen everyone getting drunk, you know, that was something that we we wanted to do too. Because when you see something happening all the time, or you see it occasionally, it's something else, it's something that you want to do too. So we'd start taking booze at these parties, we'd start drinking, stuff like that. Um, on the reserve with my friends, we'd start drinking, and that's where it started. As you get older, things escalate, things get out of control to where you're drinking all the time, you're getting high all the time, and as a teenager, especially for indigenous youth, and especially living on a reserve, it's a common thing, it's an everyday thing. It's something that is just normal. So growing up, I didn't have my dad around. My mom moved us around. She went back to school, she went to university, she got a degree in child welfare. But by that time, I was already going the other way. I was already on a different path. I was already seen too much. I was already too exposed. I already had my own ambitions and goals and things I wanted to do that were down the wrong path. We'd go visit my dad sometimes and my mom would leave us there for a weekend or for a couple weeks or whatever. But during those times, you know, my dad would be drinking, you'd be getting high and stuff and we thought of that as a time that we got to do that too. So, you know, we'd be getting drunk with my dad. We'd be getting high as a teenager. And it just seemed like it was normal to us. It was okay. When I was 15, I ended up smoking weed that was laced with PCP. And I went on a bad trip. I lost it. I didn't, I, I couldn't control myself when I went to the hospital. They couldn't control me. They had to put me to sleep. And then I wake up the next day and the after effects didn't go away for like months. I was messed up. I was out of it. I couldn't, you know, I didn't, like, reality was, was, it was out of sync. I was out of touch and I didn't know what was happening to me. And I was scared. I was, thought it was like I was alone and everything like that. And it was the, one of the things that pushed me to not want to drink anymore, or not wanting to get high anymore. It was a real eye-opener 
It, you know, it made me realize what was going on around me, the path I was going to go down, the life I was going to lead, the everything that was around me, you know, my surroundings, the people around me, everything like that. It, it changed me. It, it woke me up. It, you know, it, you know, it scared me straight pretty much. And it was one of those things where I started realizing what my parents went through, what my family was going through. I have a huge family, relations, cousins, aunties, uncles, everything like that. And the alcoholism and the trauma of residential schools and all the pain and everything is so deep, so deep in the family, so deep in the indigenous community. So when I decided to quit, I was 15 years old, indigenous male, living on the reserve. And as a lot of you know, peer pressure is crazy at that age. You know, like wanting to be yourself, wanting to be true to yourself, wanting to have better for yourself wasn't normal. I took a lot of ridicule, a lot of name calling, a lot of tension, a lot of everything because of it. I had people wanting to fight me because I didn't want to drink. People wanted to fight me because they thought I thought I was better than them because I didn't want to drink. People who wanted to fight me because I refused their drink. Like it wasn't good enough. People hated me because I just wanted to be sober. I had family, friends, everybody think that I thought I was better than them because I didn't want to drink, because I made a life choice, because I stuck to it. Choosing to be sober was the, probably the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. And it's always been a struggle and it hasn't been a struggle to always be sober it's just been a struggle to stay positive about it and having other people be positive around me for it because a lot of the stuff I've done growing up like I've always gone to parties nightclubs everything like that the bars everything and then I just chose not to drink it's it got to the point where I it was it was easy to not be drunk. I did music, I performed a lot, I went on the road and I did shows and all of this time all of those things were mostly in the nightclubs, mostly around partying and after parties and everything like that. And I was the only one usually not drinking. Like I was saying before, at first it was, I, you know, it was, it would be tension. You know, people would want to fight me. People would, you know, argue with me about not drinking. Then it got, as I got older, it was like where people stuck up for me. If somebody offered me a drink, they'd be like, what are you doing? Don't offer him a drink. He doesn't drink. Have some respect. And I knew then that people started looking at what I was doing. People started seeing, people started respecting my choice. A lot of the situations that I could have been in because of alcohol or because if I was drinking or anything like that, definitely I would be dead. I would definitely be in jail for life because of the life I led and the choices I made. Alcohol would have it would have killed me. It would have took me over to the edge to where I didn't want to ever be in my whole life. And choosing to be sober, even though I was doing a lot of things I shouldn't have been doing growing up, being sober and having that sober mind got me out of a lot of the negative situations that, or the outcome that could have happened. My mom sobered up when I was around nine or 10. That's around the time I remember having her last drink. She was still in university. Um, she, she graduated from U university. She went on to have an amazing career in, in child welfare. You know, she's someone I looked up to. I still look up to someone I'm proud to call my mom, someone who makes me proud. Even though my mom accomplished all these great things and did so good for herself, I 
was already, like I say, was saying before, I was already down this other path. I was already down the wrong road. I was already going to jail. She was coming to visit me in Young Offender Center. She came to visit me in Remand, stuff like that. And I, at the point, at that point in my life, I didn't realize some of the stuff I was doing that a lot of the stuff I was doing was affecting the people who cared about me or the people who looked up to me or the people who, who knew me. But that's something I want to get into in another video. So I've been sober for 21 years. And this year, my dad passed away due to alcoholism. He had liver failure. And it's something that hit home, like hard. Like it's something that, you know, you never wish for anybody, especially your parents. In my community back home, um, other communities in the city, on the reserves, you see it. People are dying all the time because of alcoholism. You know, I'm like, I'm not out there preaching or everything like that, telling everybody, oh, well, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. But the thing I can tell you is try to make better choices, try to live positive, try to make positive choices. I, I have a wife and two children we both of us don't drink we raise our children in a sober home and we love them so much i love my children and i will do everything in my power to set a better example for them for the rest of their lives if i got into all the details about how i am staying sober all the small stuff this video would be forever but i just wanted to let people know let other people know out there that you can be sober. You can still live a full fun life. You know, you can still have a good family. You can still do everything you want. You can accomplish goals, accomplish your dreams and be happy. And you don't need alcohol to do that. Thanks for listening.